Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers here. Bless them, okay? Because they are very important. It's important to have true and real men around you. And in memoriam, let us also think of our fathers that have already passed forth to heaven. And all our father figures, grandfathers, uncles, cousins, that have fulfilled that role. Amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning will be found in the 19th Psalms. The 19th Psalms. Beginning at verse number 7. If you dare say I'm there. Amen. And it reads as thus. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let us pray. Again, Father, we thank you for allowing us to be in your house of prayer this morning. We give you praise, we give you glory, God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, oh God, that rains down upon us, God. Rule and reign in this place, oh God, and then help us to render you the praise and the glory that you deserve. We give you all blessings, all honor, and all glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs>
God a real worship.
Good morning, Anna Gracia. Good morning. And happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. Here is the full gospel of this year announcements. I'm sorry, for Sunday, June 18th. Here is the full gospel international conference 2023 will be held in National Hall of Maryland, July 5th through the 7th. Please register online. In person, registration costs is $105. Virtual registration is $75. Please continue to pray for our pastor, first lady, country, the world, and each other. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, for a few minutes, we have a presentation that the ladies of the church would like to present. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Amen. Thank you. On behalf of Christian Women's Ministry, we would like to wish Happy Father's Day to Pastor. But first, first I want to say, our ultimate Father, God, we need to stop and give thanks. Because without Him, we wouldn't be here. Without Him, we wouldn't have the Father of this house, Pastor David. We are grateful, we are thankful, and we are blessed to have you, Pastor, as our pastor. A teaching pastor, a loving pastor, a pastor that cares for all, and a pastor with very subtle humor. <laughs> pastor, we love you. I read this card. There is beauty in a man of God. In his face, the humility of Moses is seen. In his voice, the wisdom of Solomon is heard. And in his heart, the spirit of God is home. So Pastor Leland, I'm 
behalf of Christian Women's Ministry and everyone in our church, happy Father's Day to a wonderful man of God from your IBC family with love.
church say amen. Amen. Quick reminder after service today, there will be a meal in the fellowship hall. Amen. Amen. And everyone is welcome. All right, it's our offering time. Come on, put your hands together. It's an important time in the service that we have an opportunity to give back to God Amen. a portion of what he has made it possible for us to have. Amen. 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 If you need an offering envelope, just hold your hands up and uh, one will be brought to you. Amen. When you're ready, amen. Let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. We thank you so much, oh God, for an opportunity to give back to you what you have blessed us with. May this offering be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. When you're ready, hold up your offering. With this seed, I plant this seed in good soil, expecting a wonderful, bountiful harvest. In Jesus' name, amen.
it online. I mean that you can watch it when you want to. Watch the classes when you want to. All is there. Thank God for technology. You don't have to be there in order to enjoy uh, the conference. Amen. And a whole group of you can watch it in one day. You can put it on your, your television. Isn't that good? Put it on your smart TV. If you smart. In some cases. I'm looking at what you're doing. I didn't tell you to do that, but put it on your smart TV, your smartphone, your laptop, your whatever. Watch the portion of the conference that you want to watch. Happy Father's Day to all our fathers on today. We thank God for you. I want to make sure that we understand the importance of fatherhood. Sometimes and oftentimes we forget that the inheritance of the family comes down to the father. You love the mother. You bear the pain. She brought us into this world. But the inheritance, the blessings of the Lord comes down to the father. God did that, I didn't do it. So that we need to make sure that if we have a earthly father, we ought to thank him today. Because of how good or how bad. Because it had not been for the seed of the father, there would be no reproduction. Amen. Don't take that lightly. Some sometimes people say, "Well, my father was a no good father." Well, he was good enough to get you here. Amen. So we say Happy Father's Day to each of you. Please join us after the morning worship in the fellowship hall for Father's Day brunch that the ladies has prepared for us. Amen. Thank you to all of you who have registered for our international conference. Thank you for your for you being obedient, your obedience. Thank you for those who have shared in our covenant partners giving as well. Thank you so much for your obedience. The new covenant partner year will begin in July. Each person can donate ten dollars a month. You don't have to wait till the end of the year to donate ten dollars a month or whatever you choose to. Make sure you uh, notate that on your offering envelope as full gospel covenant partners. You want to put in a dollar a month. We accept anything, but it's to keep the operational of our international office open with personnel to help us along the way. So ten dollars a month that just one Big Mac. Yes, I don't know what Big Mac calls I don't couple of couple of coffee. That's your stop up. Don't get quiet. When I start talking about money people start going up. Can you get anything these days without money? I know. I know you can. No, but the Holy Spirit. The money. The Bible says the love is the root of all evil. They didn't say money. Well. But money is the tool that we use to get the things we need and what we want. You can't shout Holy Ghost and go down to the city hall and pay your utilities. You take some money out of it. God, they kept me get out of one time to help somebody or allow somebody to help you pay it, but you can't go down there every month and say, I'm a Christian. Mm. Go to the grocery store, you can't go there and say, I'm a Christian, give me some groceries. You don't have to give them some presidents. So remember that. Thank you for sharing. We must learn, we learn things to, it's important to learn how to sow. I sow seed, not sow seed in the bad soil, but sow seed in the good soil. 
What I mean by that, sometimes we think that the best thing to do is sow seeds or give to somebody who's in need. But no, you gotta learn how to sow up, give seed to somebody who's already blessed. Because that means you're sowing into good soil. Don't wait till somebody twists your arm for you to sow. The Bible says the Lord blesses what? The cheerful giver. If you don't learn how to give, it's going to be hard for you to get. Unless you spend all of your time and all of your blood, sweat, and tears working four or five jobs just to make ends meet. That's not the way the Christian is supposed to live. Amen, somebody. Uh, so he will supply our uh, every need that we do what he say. Right. I learned when you do what he say, he's not short of his word. Amen. 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 Psalm number one. The first song. And reading in verse one. We do honor God who is sovereign and supreme. To his son Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord, to the Holy Ghost, y'all do know him, who is our comforter, leader, teacher, and our guide. He who leads us in the way of all truth and righteousness. Each of you in your respective places, treat you with Jesus' joy, and certainly in divine love. Psalm number one. Did they say I'm there? Yeah. We need time to wait. You will find these words recorded. Bless is the man or mankind. That's including women. Mm. That walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the word of the Lord. And his law, or his words, does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf or leaves also shall not wither. Whatsoever he or she does shall see his money happen. Prosper. Let us pray, Father. We thank you now for this preaching. And teaching moment. We pray now, God, that you release your power, your presence, your anointing upon this vessel. That I may preach and teach with power, with clarity. Anoint each of us. Anoint our ears, our hearts, our minds, our spirits. That we might hear, we might believe, receive. Explore, apply, and share this word. In advance, we give you all of the honor, all of the glory, all of the praise. But in Jesus' precious name that we pray, every heart said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Since the day is Father's Day, I we all are just we want to thank God for thank our earthly Father, and most of all, we want to thank God for our heavenly Father. Amen. 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 So we just thank God for this day. My brothers and my sisters from Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Today we're going from these words, the characteristics of a blessed Christian. My God. The characteristics of a blessed Christian. My brothers and my 
sisters, those of us who have professed and proclaimed to be followers, believers of Christ, mm -hmm. we are considered as being a Christian. Mm -hmm. We have his name because we have professed and proclaimed that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. What God did for him, what God did with him to pay our sin debt. So we become Christians. But I want to remind us today that all who have confessed, all who have proclaimed and professed mm -hmm. as Christians are not really blessed. Mm, yes, their name perhaps is on or in the Lamb Book of Life. And they're going to heaven anyhow. Mm. But many are still not blessed. Yes, they have eternal salvation. Yes, that we have eternal life, but we have a life to live on earth before we get to that eternal home. Mm -hmm. And there are two things, I should say, Amen. that are Christians, but they are not blessed. How do I know that? Because the characteristic doesn't show. Mm. The attributes, the qualities are not there. Uh. Because if, if you are a blessed Christian, then there should be some special characteristics and attributes of your life that will show Jesus that we can judge the tree by the fruit that it bears. You can tell whether it's a peach tree because it's not going to produce apples. It's going to produce what? Peaches. Peaches. So today I want us to understand as we celebrate Father's Day and all of that, and we thank God for Father's Day, we thank God for Father's and thank God for my father. He's been going on several years. But I, I thank God for my father because, because there were some, some, some characteristics mm. that he had that showed that he was a Christian. So so but today I want us to understand the importance of we as God's church, as God's chosen, as God's Christians, to understand what we are supposed to be as being blessed. We can say it. Hey, child, I'm blessed. But then as soon as money gets funny, change gets strange. And your credit won't get it. Oh, my you have the tendency uh, to, to run from God uh, instead of running to God. Uh, a blessed Christian will understand his or uh, her importance of having a, 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 a communication with God that is always open. Yes, because we are doing the things that he told us to do and we are not doing the things he told us not to do. So, Psalm 1 gives us an illustration, gives us an idea of what a blessed Christian characteristics should be. Are y'all with me? My brothers and my sisters, there are many yardsticks mm -hmm. by which mankind measure being blessed. Mm -hmm. There are many things people say that, that they, they, they believe mm -hmm. that you are blessed by some of the things they say. Among them are position. Mm -hmm. Because you have a certain position, they say you're blessed. Come on now. Because of power. You have a certain amount of power that they say that you are blessed. Prestige mm -hmm. and wealth. If you have a lot of money in the bank, if you got a lot of money anywhere, then many people would judge you by saying because of that, yeah, go ahead. you are blessed. Uh -huh. Listen carefully. These things 
things are all indicators mm -hmm. of worldly success. All right. These are indicators of worldly prosperity. Mm. However, measuring your blessings and your success as a Christian, as a child of God, is a little more difficult than just having power. Just having prestige and position. It's a little more difficult than that because we have seen over our lifetime people who have power and have position and prestige doesn't really show us any Come on, that they are really blessed. Are y'all with me? Often, there is little tangible, visible evidence which you can put your hands on to prove that you are living a blessed Christian life. So, okay, man? Yeah. I, I really yeah. want to tell you because I think somebody missed it. There's a little tangible uh -huh. physical evidence which you can put your hands on uh -huh. to prove that you are living ah. a blessed Christian life. That means that because you have money, you can put your hands on that. That don't mean that you're living a blessed Christian life. You can have positions. You can be the president of the United States. You can be the governor of a state. You can be whatever. You can be the head of a, a, a huge company, but just because of your position, your power, and your prestige does not mean that you are a blessed Christian. Okay. My God. This, here we go. Generally, success for the Christian is not of a Christian is more internal than external. All right. What do I mean by that? It is. The small amount of external evidence we produce is the result of much internal activity in our heart. Listen carefully. The small amount of external evidence that we produce is a result of much internal activity in our hearts and our lives. That is why it's difficult for the Christian who live in a materialistic world to gauge their blessings from God. It's hard to gauge the blessing from God when we're living in a materialistic world. Because the world says that you're going to have a whole lot of materialistic, materialistic stuff to be blessed. Mm -hmm. It's good to have stuff. It's good to have things tangible. It's good to have all of these things, but that doesn't really make that doesn't really make you a call you to be blessed just by having materialistic things. Mm. Why do I say that? Because just die. <laughs> and see how many of those materialistic things you can take with you. Right. My God. My God. Most of the materialistic things, or perhaps how all of the materialistic things, things that you can put your hands on, things that are tangible, is going to end up in the ash pile of life. Yeah. It's fried by the fire. It's going to end up in ashes. Car you driving? Yeah. House you live in? Clothes you wear? It's going to all end up in ashes. But survive. You can't take your house to heaven. Mm -hmm. You can't take your car to heaven. You can't take your clothes to heaven. You can't take any of those tangible materialistic things to heaven. Amen. Amen. So if we're going to be a blessed Christian, have the characteristics of a blessed Christian that we need to make sure and very sure that we embody those things that God has called or God has created for us.
us to have so we can be blessed. Guess what? You can't take your good looks there either. Ooh. You can't take your fine self there. Not because you're fine. You can be fine as a coat bar. Oh my God. It won't take you there. But it won't take you. To eat other life. You could be sweet as a honey in the honeycomb. Come on now. But it won't take you. Right. You can walk like a stunning peacock. Oh, right. It won't take you. Oh. So, so, so my brothers and my sisters, hear me well today. It, it's important that we understand, understand how to possess, how to have the characteristics of what God says is a best Christian. Mm -hmm. So, as I examine this text, Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3, I discover some insight into what makes a Christian best. Now, everybody want to be blessed. They want to have the good things. They want to have good jobs, good homes. They want you hardly encounter anybody who just literally say, I don't want anything. And you'll find a few. But most people want good, good things, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But do we want to do what it takes? to get those good things that's going to last, not just on earth, but all the way into eternity. All right. So when I looked at this psalm, verses 1 through 3, and, and, and I looked at uh, uh, that there are some characteristics that we need to possess if we're going to be a blessed Christian. Now, the first thing I want us to notice, we want to have the characteristics of the best Christian. The first thing I want us to notice in the text is the path of the best Christian. The path. How the Christian lives or walk. Walk, translated most of the time in the Bible, meaning it. The path of a blessed believer. Well, the psalmist says the best Christian is separated by his walk of life mm -hmm. or his life. You can't deal with a in the things that God told you not to do mm. and not do the things that he told you to do. And think that you are getting or gaining the characteristics of a blessed Christian. Amen. You may do some things on your own, but guess what? They don't run out. Yes, it do. <laughs> Amen. Because if you're strong now and you can run fast now, guess what? Time has something to do about that. Yeah. It gets to the point that you can't get how to get out. Let's go and run. Yeah. So, 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 so the path. Oh, the blessed Christian. The, the best Christian is separated in his walk or in his life. He doesn't, watch this, he doesn't believe like the ungodly. Mm -hmm. The blessed Christian don't think like or believe like the ungodly. Doesn't listen to their advice. But this is the case. Watch this. Watch it. Watch what it says. Blessed is a man or mankind mm -hmm. that walketh not Ooh. in the council of who? Oh, no. The ungodly. The best Christian don't listen to the ungodly. Mm. Now there are some Christians that listen to the ungodly. Come on now. Oh, that's what they hang Oh. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. they, they they want to be blessed, but they're hanging out with the wrong crowd. Oh, so 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 the blessed Christian mm -hmm. doesn't 
doesn't believe in the ungodly, doesn't listen to their advice, and don't live in their arena. Ah, my God. Tell it. that you've got some Christians that want to be blessed with all this hanging out with the ungodly. No, not just hang out because sometimes you have to mingle with them. Yeah. But but they they they, they, they abide mm -hmm. with the ungodly. The psalmist says that the blessed man the blessed that walketh the blessed man walketh not mm -hmm. in the counsel of the ungodly. Oh, Thank you. Don't listen. Speak. Because if they are ungodly, the devil got a foothold mm -hmm. on them. And most of the things that they're going to say sooner or later is going to be something that's going to be against Come on. what you really need. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 so the best Christian doesn't believe like that ungodly, but the best Christian also doesn't behave oh. like that ungodly. Mm, Thank you, Thank you. You do know that the New Testament, mm -hmm. Paul, Matthew, Luke, and John, mm -hmm. Teaches us how to be saved. Teach. The four first four books of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Teaches us how to be saved. Oh, the rest of the New Testament teaches us how to behave. Uh, come on. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the blessed Christian doesn't behave like the ungodly. There's a difference yes, it is. in their behavior. You can't just be saying that I'm a blessed Christian. Mm -hmm. You gotta behave like you are a blessed Christian. Amen. Yes, I'm yeah, I know you say, but well, how do you behave? Amen. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Because see, once you become a Christian, if you want to be a blessed Christian, you got to understand that you are a new creation. Yeah. You are a new creature. So you don't do the things that you used to do that was that that, that was against God. You don't desire to do those things. You desire to walk. Oh God. God. Thank God. My God. Thank you, Lord. The path of the blessed Christian mm -hmm. doesn't believe in the ungodly. I believe like the ungodly. It doesn't behave like the ungodly. He's a new creature. He's a new creation. But thirdly, mm. the blessed Christian doesn't belong. The old folks say that if you lay down with the oh, dog, you'll end up with fleas. Please. Please. I don't know what they say. Uh -huh. End up with fleas. So keep hanging with the ungodly. Keep hanging around those folks. Because you got to understand that you are who you are because of who you hang around with, uh -huh. the books you read, and the things you listen to. Woo. That's it. Keep listening to them folks who don't have anything to say encouraging as what God says and see what happens to you. And really, many of us who are in that predicament today because we have a tendency Hallelujah. to hang around the ungodly more than to hang around with the children of God. Uh -huh. Amen. The Bible teaches us that once we become saved, we come out from among them. Woo! Lord, I thank you. Doesn't mean that we don't converse with them. But we don't hang around them. We don't abide in their arena. So, so, so now, the, the, the blessed Christian, mm -hmm. the characteristic of a blessed Christian is, is if you want to know that, a, that you are a blessed Christian or somebody is a blessed Christian, mm -hmm. watch their path. Watch their path. Watch how they walk. God. Watch how they live. Mm -hmm. Watch them. Because many times we say one thing, do another. Do another. You know what they call that, right? Double another. That's a hypocrite. Hypocrites. And we think the hypocrites in the world, but we got a bunch of them in the church. Right. The blessed Christian, we, we know this is a path of the blessed Christian. Secondly, I want us to know the pleasure. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. The pleasure. What, what, what makes you, what, what makes the blessed Christian feel good? Mm -hmm. What makes the blessed Christian enjoyable? Are full of joy. Yes, what gives the blessed Christian pleasure? Goodness, love, joy, peace. I'm talking about the best Christian now. I'm talking about a Christian. Come on now, go ahead. Go ahead. Look at verse 2. It tells us in yeah. verse 2. It says, But his or her mm -hmm. delight, delight, pleasure 
Enjoyment mm -hmm. is in the law. Yeah. What is the law? Mm -hmm. The word of God. Mm -hmm. The blessed Christian enjoyment, not in the football game, uh -uh. not in the concert, uh -uh. not in the comedian. Mm -mm. Because see, a lot of times we get, and I, and I like comedy, and I like sports, uh -huh. but a lot of times we get more joy out of being sitting with somebody telling lies <laughs> than we do in church. Come on, because guess what? You pay 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars. Go, go to a comedy show. Come on, come and drop it. And you come to church and you be as you want to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, let me know you told. I know. I know. It's okay. The blessed Christian. The pleasure of the blessed Christian is that they enjoy the word, the law of the Lord. Jesus said, before my word yes, tell it. Heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. That's why we should be delighted in what God said, because we know what he said is going to last forever. Yes. And we got this morning, we saw the sunshine, right? So that means the earth is still, the earth is still, the earth is still here, right? So that means it was Word is still, his word is still true. Mm -hmm. Before his word fails, so that means not only is his word available, it, but it can fail. Mm -hmm. So now, give me what? The blessed Christian. Now, maybe, maybe, maybe some Christians just don't want to be blessed. Uh -oh. And I know that's true because of of how they live. Okay. Watch their past. And watch their pleasure. They'll show you that they don't really want to be left. I don't know what God is saying. God don't know. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 that's old fogey. <laughs> that's old talk. Uh -huh. You got to tell it. But listen. The blessed Christian should be in love with the word of God. Yeah. <laughs> because that is our life. To a dog pathway and to a lamp to a light. Mm -hmm. That's what the word of God says. So, 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 so we should be in love with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Let me take it a step further. Can I go deeper? Amen. The pleasure of the blessed Christian is in love with the word of God. Why? Because the word of God has captured his or her complete affection. I don't know about you, but I love the Lord. Amen. And I don't just say that because it's I love the Lord because, here it is, He first loved me. Amen. Because when I was on my way, wasn't even born, but when I was on my way to devil's hell, God sent Jesus to the cross to die for me. Yes. Why, why would I love somebody like that? Mm. Die for me that I can have eternal life with Him. Yes, mm -hmm. So, 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 so the blessed Christian, the pleasure of the blessed Christian is they delight in the Lord. They love the Word of God because the Word of God has captured their complete affection. Let me pause for a minute because I'm going to challenge somebody right here. Put your hand on yourself. If they said to sin, I'll let Mr. Brown go on. <laughs> Sir, has the word of God really captured your complete, uh, com uh, captured my complete affection? Think about it. If you want to be a blessed Christian, and we say we are, then the word of God should have captured your complete, in other words, you love the word of God above any other Above what the Congress say, above what the governor say, above what the president say, above what anybody say, the word of God should have captured your complete affection. Amen. To 
to the believer, the word of God is the truth of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. God said it, whether you believe it or not, that says it. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. The best Christian loves it, and he or she lives it. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we won't make no mistakes? No, it no. don't. We're going to make some mistakes. That's why Jesus died. Oh, my, my. But our mistakes have already been taken care of. Come on now. Uh huh. So, 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 so the blessed believer loves the word of God and lives the word of God. Okay. Now, if you're not living what God says live, then you've got a chance. You agree? Mm -hmm. You've got a chance to become a blessed Christian. Yeah. That simply means that you got more money than more. You ain't got to worry about how your bills going to get paid. The family's doing well. All those things that God promised to do, he will do it even when problems come. Yes, he will. It's a problem yes, yes, When problems come, you won't have to rip and roll because you know God said it. Hallelujah. So I'm depending on him. I don't care what kind of disease it may be. you still depending on God. Lord, I'm waiting on you. Yes, mm -hmm. on you. Mm -hmm. Listen. Word of God is food. Mm -hmm. It's milk for the baby Come on. and meat for the mature Christian. Uh, the Word of God is light. The Word of God is water. The Word of God, it cleanses. The Word of God, it quizzes. The Word of God, it refreshes. The Word of God is a seed. And the Word of God is a soul. Yes, it is. So that's what that's that means that the word of God will protect us 24 7. Seven. Amen. Yes, you don't have to worry. Be concerned. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to worry about the economy. Mm-mm. No -mm. man. Because you stand on the word of God. Yeah. God did say I will take care of my home. Yes, he will. You don't have to worry about the downsizing. If they downsize your job, God give me a battle. Yes, he will. I'm talking about the best Christian. I'm not talking about the halfway one. Okay. Ones who are the best. God will do what He said He would do. Yeah. He will make things better if you trust Him. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so the pleasure of the best Christian, mm -hmm. the Word of God that has captured their complete affection. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the pleasure of the blessed Christian, the word of God has captured their complete attention. Mm -hmm. Captured their affection. Captured their attention. Mm -hmm. Many Christians, they don't pay attention to the trouble. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. They don't pay attention to there's a there's a there's a there's a, there's a hardship. Come on. They don't pay attention to things get tough and go and get rough. Uh -huh. But as a blessed Christian, Bless. you must allow the word of God to capture mm. your complete attention before things get rough. Amen. Because when things get rough and you want to run to God, the devil will start to have it. Where you going? Hey, where you going? Don't you know that you haven't done anything God told you to do? So the devil will fool you, trick you, bamboozle you to make you think that God is not going to hear you. I got good news. He still gives you a child. If you're not a child, then you've got to make sure that you become a child first. But you're a child. He still hears you. Y'all don't know when you're a child. Because if God will kill me with, with my mess up self, that's good news. Isn't it? I was stumbling and fumbling and messed up, but when I would do like that and run back to him, uh -huh. he says, Me, he heals me, right? Why? Because I'm going to heal. If I never confess that I was going to heal, then he doesn't heal me until I make a confession yeah. that Jesus Christ is the Son that died for my sin. So, so, so the Word of God, keep me with the Word of God has captured their complete attention. So that means not only does the best Christian love the book or love the word, but lives the word. Mm -hmm. And not just live it on Mother's Day. Father's Day. Or Easter. Well, Father's Day ain't coming on Father's Day. Ain't <laughs> coming. Mother's Day, Easter, Christmas. Christmas. Oh. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
like a father, mother in their home with their children. They don't just let their children get by with stuff. Well, at least I did. Hmm. There's some consequences coming. Uh -huh. Well, why did that even Because you've got to understand that this was wrong. You get you gonna get punished for it. So you remember the next time. Yes, That's what don't spare the rods for the child means. Discipline. So, 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 so remember that even when you have messed up, you can go back to God. He will forgive you because like you did baby. But well, guess what? The Bible declares that the soul never left David's house. All right. All of David is known as a man after God's own heart because there were consequences in what David did. Remember, he was a dog when he got took the man's wife and then had his wife killed. <laughs> That's right. You can't do much worse than that. Come on. Well, I can't get that. <laughs> <laughs> but David, David was, David went back to God and he got forgiveness. But guess what? He suffered the consequences of his wrong. So now, Jesus had, secondly, the pleasure. Now we're going to look at the prosperity and success. Do the next word. Verse. This is what he said. And he, as she do it, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit or her fruit, and gives of her season, his of her leaf, also shall not wither, and whatsoever he or she do it, shall that means it's going to happen. Shall prosper. We're posting the good news now. The promises of this verse is conditional. When we live separate lives and feed our souls on God's word, then we can expect things to happen. It's condition. It's just not gonna happen just because you want it to happen. Come on. It's conditional when we have separated lives, or when we live separate lives and feed that be separated from the word of stuff and feed on the word of God, then we can expect things to happen. Ooh, my God. I found out. That God's blessing is a whole lot better than what I can do alone. I can yeah. work my fingers to the bone yeah. and still get a little bit, but God blesses, I don't have to come sit out and wait. That blessing that He's already released until I get in position to receive it. Mm -hmm. Listen, what do you think the best Christian should expect from God? Well, the song would say this, that the characteristic of the, of the best believer is eventually you will receive prosperity. So, what does the best Christian expect? Well, you and I as Christians, we are believers in Jesus Christ. We have acted upon that. We expect to prosper. Mm -hmm. We expect to be blessed, right? I don't know about you, but I expect to be blessed. Amen. Time Amen. He got everything I expect to have somewhere. He got. Mm -hmm. He said he would supply all of my needs, mm -hmm. so I should be able to walk with anything. Last week we talked about from the, the 23rd Psalm. Mm -hmm. David says, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Mm -hmm. But he said, The Lord is my shepherd, he's my leader. So I shall not be in need for anything. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because he is my shepherd. Right. So, so the best believer or the best Christian expect to prosper, expect to be blessed. Yeah. Well, where, where do you expect to be blessed? I'm going to give you about seven things and I'm going to be out. First of all, the best believer should expect prosperity because of his position. Look at the text. Verse 3 says, The 
this Krishna shall be like a tree planted by rivers. Much more. Rivers. We expect prosperity because we are planted by the river. Always close to the life giving resources. The tree that is planted by the river is never dry. Come on. The tree that is planted by the rivers of water or any water is never wilted. You better tell it. The tree that is planted by the river is green, lush, and lovely. Ah. Hmm. All right. See, the blessed believer who lives close to God mm -hmm. will never be dry and withered, he or she will be vibrant, lively, and productive. If you are a blessed Christian, your life will speak for you. You don't have to go around telling go out there. Your life will speak for you because you will, you will remain lively and productive and vibrant. Best believer expect to be prosperous in his position, but he or she should also be expect to be prosperous in his or her prominence, mm -hmm. meaning exaltation. A tree. Think about it. Mm -hmm. The life of the best Christian stands, watch this, head above all those. The tree stands up above all the other brush, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. The life of a blessed believer, the son of said, like a tree. Mm -hmm. The tree stands above all that is around it. The blessed Christian will stand out and above all those who are around him or she. Best Christian also expect permanence, lasting, abiding. That not you just not gonna be blessed on Sunday. Your blessing is gonna be lasting. Lasting. That's right. Anybody want any lasting blessing? I want. Last, I want to be blessed every day. That's why right. I want to be a, a, a Christian. That God wants me be so He can bless me every day. Mm -hmm. it, it says in, in verse three, we we'll stay in verse three. It says planted. Something like what is it? Planted. A tree like some other plants that is planted will again, I must say, stand for all the other plants. You see, many of the other plants, they live for a season, they die out. But most trees, they don't die out. The leaves fall, the leaves turn brown, the leaves fall, but they don't die out, right? But if spring comes, guess what happens? They flourish again. That's why the sun is saying, is that the blessed Christian is like a tree that is planted. It's going to last. Some plants last for a season. They're, they die. And if you want that plant, again, you got to do it. You got to, you got to plant a new plant. But that seed, that, that tree, that oak tree, that whatever tree it is, it doesn't die. It's so the blessed, the, the blessed Christian expect position out of the expense permanent, a permanence, excuse me, to be exalted, to live high above everybody else. Permanence to last. Then the blessed Christian expect to be blessed because of his or her productivity. Mm -hmm. 
You see, a lot of us, we're just waiting on God to drop stuff right in our lap. Uh oh. Say, here it is. You got to learn how to be productive. That's right. You got to learn how to do what God says, and then He will cause you to be productive. That's right. Bring forth fruit. Listen to what it says. That bringeth forth fruit. Blessed Christian always will be a blessing to someone else. Mm -hmm. The blessed Christian is a blessing to all those around them. Mm -hmm. Because their fruit is plentiful. The next thing you should expect as a, a blessed Christian is his or her predictability. You can know how things are going to go. In a sense. Because the psalmist says that he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. We know as Christians that all seasons of my life is just like the four seasons of, 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 of humanity or physically. There's, there's winter, and after winter comes spring, after spring comes summer, after summer come, comes fall. But just as there are seasons of fruit bearing, so there are times of rest and growth for the best Christian. We know that sometimes when we go to Amazon, mm -hmm. you find any child of God who don't ever take any rest, that's a bad person to deal with. Mm -hmm. You got to know when it's time to rest. Amen. All the trees that we see, they don't flourish all the time. Amen. As Christians, you got to know when to take some rest. Powerful. God can't fix us when we always do. Powerful. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Uh, a mechanic cannot fix your car if you always drive. Right. You got to drive it into the garage and sometimes be jacked up for your car to be fixed. Sometimes you got to go sit down somewhere and let the Lord jack you up so he can fix you up. We got to understand our season. We got to understand that all our season is not going to be flourishing. We're going to have some but, but, but the psalmist said, you like a tree. You planted it by the river. You know, that you're going to flourish. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. If it's too many, I'll be finished. You need to do it. You must understand that there should be time to rest. And in our lives, in time of growth. As Christians, we ought to worry over the fruit. You know, that's what's wrong with a lot of Christians. They're trying, they're trying to worry over what God does. Mm, yeah. Jesus gave an example of a farmer. A farmer planted a seed, put it in the ground. Nothing he can do if it comes up, right? Yes. Amen. We ought to be seed sold. We are not to worry about the fruit. Right. God, when we plant that seed in the ground, God does what he does, and the next thing we know, however long it takes, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, the seed comes up. Yes. What do we do while it was in the ground? Yeah. Okay. Nothing. Oh. They were uh -huh. But we didn't do nothing with the seed. Uh -huh. You put it in the ground. So we must understand the point of sowing the seed and don't worry over the fruit. That's the father's business. Let it go. My last point. The best believer really expect prosperity. Thank you, Lord. Really expect to be successful. Amen. Why should we expect? Because that's what God said. I don't know about you. I just believe what he said. That's right. What he said, what he said. And as a blessed Christian, we are blessed because we believe that we are supposed to be blessed. Amen. And we are supposed to be blessed because we are 
following the word of God. Listen. The text says, whatever, whatever. he do or she shall be his own now. In other words, God will bless the Christian who know that they are blessed. Not only will God bless, but he'll bless the Christian personal life, family life, business life, spiritual life. It all will be blessed of God. <laughs> Don't let the devil fool me that I got to come up short because of what I did 20 years 20 ago, years 30 ago. years ago. <laughs> no, when you become a child of God and you go back oh. to him and ask God to forgive you, he wipes the sin. Amen. Amen. Does God forget what you've done? No, of course he does. But he's not influenced by what you have done. Because you have come born into the throne of grace. You have done right there. You ran back to God and said, Oh, it's me. I messed up. And you find someone who said they never messed up, they already messed up. Oh. Run back to God and ask God to forgive you and, and don't let the devil trick you that he won't forgive you. That's right. The scripture says the only sin that God will not forgive Which you is blasphemy of the Lord. That's a quote from the Holy Ghost. It says there's no Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost calls you to be saved in the first place. So it doesn't matter. You could have murdered somebody. You could have stolen a billion dollars. God still will forgive you. Right, still appears. He's gonna forgive. So he's big enough to make the world go around, the earth go around, however way they say it happens. If he's big enough to do that, he can take care of your little stuff. That's right. Amen. He can take care of anything that you have done. He can forgive you and say, "Let's go." Just stay forward. What you gonna do? Amen. Amen. I close on today. Amen. I don't know how you all feel, but living in this world today, we already know that the world ain't gonna get better. We need to make sure that we position ourselves in a place with God so 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 we are better. All right. Amen. And can handle all the stuff that the world is right. saying. You know, there's, there's corrupt people everywhere you go. Yeah. The whole idea is to do some stupid. Oh! And I found out you can't fix it. Uh-huh. You gotta do some evil stuff. And they don't care. Because instead of trying to get their need, they're trying to get their greed. Oh! And so we as children of God, we gotta make sure that we have a communication, a connection with Him, that when we need Him, He'll show us. I don't know about you, but I know I'm blessed. Amen. I don't have to ask nobody. I know that I'm blessed. Not just because of materialistic things, but because of my relationship yeah. with God. Yeah. I know I'm blessed. I can probably be a show up. Does he show up at the end of the car? No, but he's coming. That's what he promised to do. And, and you got to know it too, that. I'm not blessed because I got materialistic or something. I'm blessed because of my relationship with God Almighty, who has everything. Amen. I don't know how you feel about it. But I know I'm blessed. I know. It may not look like it. Mm. I may not look like it to you. I may not feel like it sometimes, but I know I'm blessed. It may not be my seat. I may be going through the winners of my life. Ah, but I still know I'm blessed. Come on, huh? Because after the winner comes free. Oh, after, after all the dead things have passed away, there's a new life. When my season comes, I know it's coming. Mm-hmm. Some of you may be struggling because it may not be your season. You may be going through the winter times of your life. But when your season Come. Mm. You gotta believe that it's coming. 
It's coming. And it's really nice cold. And, and, and the snow is falling. And, and all of that. But, but the season is coming. Yes, Lord. Doesn't believe that it's coming. Yes, it may be just when all my enemies get around me and poke fun at me. That my season will come. come it may be right then that, 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 that when my enemies are rejoicing, my children are having a feel that when my enemies are laughing and, and making fun of me, and then God steps in. Thank you, Jesus. Because you do know seasons change. Yes, it does. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, be, be aware of the importance of being a Yes. Having those characteristics, your path is right. Your pleasure is right. Your prosperity is coming because of your path and what you pleasure. Mm -hmm. Many of us we want prosperity. We want the best of the land, but we don't care. We don't watch our path. You better tell. We don't me. watch how we walk. Come on. We don't watch how we talk. We don't watch where we. Spend all of our time, talent, money, and temple. Wow. But if you want to be a Christian that God blesses you daily, make sure that you, your path is not in the seat of the scornful, not in the way of sinners, but your path is connected to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. God is looking for him. And he's even challenging us mm -hmm. to make sure that we get on the right path. Mm -hmm. A lot of things is happening. You gotta remember that God let it happen. He's not the orchestrator of it, but he allowed it to happen. Whatever it is, he allowed it to happen. And if he allowed it to happen, he allowed it to happen for a reason. That's right. mm -hmm. What we need to do is find out, Lord, what is you teaching? Telling me, do, it all. do what you're doing to me. Mm -hmm. But if you're one of his children, as the song said, you can have a blessed life. Amen. 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 You don't have to be worried about something. You know, now, I said be concerned, but not worried. Yeah. Talk about that win. You can win. The word, I mean, when the word. All right, tell it. A lot of times we are worried when we just need to be concerned. Yeah. Because you can't help feel that they get same thing. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lord. Win over word. That's what I'm talking about. Win mm -hmm. over. You can win over word. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that. You're concerned, and we're concerned, this is my point. We're concerned about our children now, going even going to school. That's right. Because they're going to shoot up the schools, they shoot up the, 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 the movie theater, they go to the and all that. You got to be concerned about that. Mm -hmm. But don't worry about that. Thank you, Lord. That's right. Because see, God is still in control. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. I believe. Now, that's just my belief. You may not believe like me. Right. I believe. Because we can't do it our children 24 mm 7. -hmm. We got to allow God to do what he does. Mm -hmm. But now, don't expect God to do what He does and want to do when you ain't doing nothing. All right. Woo. Just remember, God is a just God. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And He's a God of correction. Yeah. He's a God of judgment. Uh -huh. So He allows some things to happen because He loves you just to get your attention that you won't lose at all.
something from this word today. Yes, amen. Yeah. 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 Yes. I'm going to be blessed in whatever I do. Yes. When I was playing sports, I wanted to be blessed. Mm -hmm. May not look blessed all the time, but that's what I wanted to be. I didn't try to, I didn't start, nobody started to come in second. We always try to win. But on this, on this journey, you don't have to come in first or second. Just stay in the race. Finish the race. Right. Stay with God. And he will stay with you. Come on, bless up with your hands.